Hi, this video is to show you how to use ChemDraw. It's a great and useful program, and I, you need it for Organic Chemistry Lab. You might use it for the class, and I know you'll get some use out of it in some of your biology courses, too. It's not that difficult to use once you get the basics down. So that's my point of making this screen capture video, is to show you the basics of ChemDraw. So here goes. All right, coming over here to the ChemDraw screen that I already have open, and you can see a molecule on there. It's benzene with a methyl group, methylbenzene. I'm going to go show you how something like that can be drawn. First, look at the tools over here and select the bond tool. There's two ways to draw a bond. One, you can click and drag. The other is that you can simply click, and then ChemDraw decides what angle to put it at. I don't like that, so I'm going to undo. Click and drag, click and drag, click and drag, click and drag, and there, I've got a six-membered ring that looks pretty sorry. So what I'm going to do is go over here to the Select tool, and you have two Select tools. One is a marquee, one is a lasso. Doesn't matter which one you use, for your convenience, when you click on a select tool, ChemDraw will automatically select the last thing you drew, because often that's what you want selected. Then I'm going to go under Structure and Clean Up Structure. Hey, not so bad. ChemDraw figured it out. ChemDraw does have chemical sense. So that's cyclohexane, but I want benzene. Two ways to get there. You notice there's a multiple bond tool here, and you can get double one and a half, I don't know what those are, triple, even quadruple bonds, won't be using those in organic chemistry. So you can grab the double bond tool and make something a double bond. Or you could just draw a double bond if that's what you want. I never use this tool. I just go back to the solid bond, click on it and make it double. Click on it and make it double. If you'd like to make a double bond into triple, oops, so I'm wrong, you, don't, you can't do that. Ah. That will simply change the position of the double bond. You can see where it is now, uh, equally spaced between the adjacent bonds. Uh, in order to go from a double bond to a triple bond, you have to drag. Triple to quadruple, and one more time, and you just go back to a double bond. ChemDraw has chemical sense. It, this is the molecule ethane, but it figures that if you're drawing something, it'll be more complicated than that, and so whenever you draw ethane, it'll put a little warning on there. It's simply because, hey, you have sort of a stray bond hanging around. I'm going to go back to my marquee tool, select both of these things, and then delete them. Grab my bond tool again, make methylbenzene. That's a fine structure for methylbenzene. From an artistic point of view, chemists don't like to see just a lone methyl group as a stick sticking out here. So I'm going to change that into a CH3. It's not necessary. Everyone understands it's a methyl group, but it's just artistically bad. So I'm going to go get the text tool, click on that, and you can see you get a normal eye bar. But when you put the eye bar over an atom, it turns into an atom symbol. And I'm going to type CH3. ChemDraw knows that's a formula, so it automatically subscripted the three. On the other hand, if I just come out here and I want to type some text, and I type CH3, ChemDraw assumes I'm typing text, not formulas. So I can subscript that three, either by going to the subscript tool, or simply by telling it it is a formula. So I'm going to unsubscript it and show you the other way text, what style, make it formula style. Same thing, two different ways. You'll find that a lot in ChemDraw. You can also label other atoms. I can have an ethyl, no, it can't be capitalized. There we go, I can have an ethyl group. I can have an isopropyl group. I can make a chlorine, a bromine, anything I want. As I mentioned, ChemDraw does have chemical sense. 
So I'm going to draw a double bond from this carbon to this chlorine. And ChemDraw pretty much hates when you draw five bonds to carbon. I'm going to go get a new tool, the eraser tool. Click on it once, and it'll take that from a double back to a single. I don't need that CH3 sitting around. So you can draw a chain quite simply. Okay, it wasn't so simple. Each time I'm doing this, ChemDraw is deciding which way the bond goes. I'd prefer to click and drag to make sure it is what I want. Eraser tool, eraser tool. I have seven carbons. I have heptane. Or I could decide I want heptene. This chain tool does the same thing. Now I've got octane. There's a whole palette of arrows. This is just sort of a normal arrow for a chemical reaction. You know, I want this all to be formula. Bromine and iron is a catalyst. rid of that. Let's make that arrow a reasonable length. And then let's draw the product. Uh, I didn't do that well. I selected the toluene. I'm going to hold down the option key and you see how the hand gets a plus in it? That means you drag a new copy into place. I just prefer that over copy and paste. It's easier. The product has a bromine in it, and it has a bromine in it at this position. I don't like it there. I want it there. And everything looks pretty good for this chemical reaction. Other features that you're going to see over here are the different types of bonds. For example, a wedged. It's got two different kinds of hashed bonds. That might be a hydrogen. That might be a methyl group. There we go. And notice it seems to understand both CH3 and methyl. Other tools you might find useful. I think I want ethylene again. Draw a molecule of ethylene, and you can look at, or draw rather, the molecular orbitals. And then ask your friends, is that the highest occupied molecular orbital or the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital? I drew benzene earlier, but I'd never draw it again. Every time I click with the benzene tool, I get a benzene. Also, if I click with the benzene tool on a bond, now I have a fused ring like naphthalene. You can see there are lots of other types of rings you can make. Now some other tools that might be useful. Just regular old things you might need to draw. For instance, wow, this is a special molecule. I want to put it in a shadowed box. Of course, in chemistry, we have brackets, too. I don't know why those needed brackets. If you want to draw mechanisms, there are nice curved arrows. And then you can change them once you've drawn them. This is a reaction tool. You don't need it for just drawing structures. This one might be handy. Boom, I've got a TLC plate. Oh, it's got two lanes. Wow, it's got three lanes. And the RF of that one's different than that one. Uh, then I'm going to option shift a dot to make more dots. 
almost every time I use the TLC tool, I have to look up the commands. So don't be afraid to go to the help or Google help for ChemDraw. It's an easy program and it has a lot of advanced features. For instance, I showed you all these different ring systems, eight membered rings, seven membered rings. It gets a lot more complicated than that. Uh, for instance, you can draw amino acids in their side chains. Takes a minute for these things to load. Loading. Let's say, for example, you really wanted a kidney. Boom, there's your kidney. Chemical clipware if you want round bottom flasks or bugs. Or even cell membranes. You've got it right there. Templates for DNA, all of the six carbon sugars, or maybe what you need is a mitochondria. Oh, you can't see this, it's off the screen. Go to these tools. There's a lot of fun stuff there. Different kinds of aromatic rings, for instance. I want to show you two other things that are useful. Right now, the program has on something called view, no, sorry, object fixed lengths and fixed angles. This is okay for drawing most things, but suppose you didn't like the angle this methyl group is at. Go back and get a bond tool, hold down the shift key, and you can move it. Notice you can only move it to certain angles and certain lengths. If you turn off the fixed angles, you can move something precisely to the angle you want. If you turn off the fixed lengths, you can move it precisely to the length you want. All right, this is some ChemDraw basics. I hope it helps you out. Make sure that when you download the program, you follow exactly the instructions that appear on the screen. And get it installed on your computer and get to use it and know it before you actually need it. Good luck.